So on September 26, 2015, James Swain Jr. was 25 years old and found deceased behind the 3100 block of Welcome Road. It was apparent he was shot several times. There was a severe thunderstorm that rolled through that early morning. Some gunshots were heard by some residents. Other residents didn't hear the gunshots, just associate it with lightning strikes or thunder. They looked out the window and saw what they believed just some clothes laying under a clothesline. Um, at some point, the police were notified. When officers arrived, they found um, Mr. Swain under this clothesline. The rain was still coming down, so we had to work the crime scene in the rain. He was transported to the medical examiner's office and later determined that he had been shot several times. When we did search the scene, nothing of forensics value was really found. We did recover two shell casings from the scene uh, in the vicinity of the victims uh, where he was recovered from. They were sent to the lab and at this point in time have not come back as a match to any firearm known to the lab. So during the investigation, we were able to determine through his cell phone that he had on him that he had been in the area for several hours prior to the shots fired call. He took some selfies of himself, um, so we were able to pull those photos off the phone. He was wearing the same clothes in the selfies as he was found in, and the um, date and timestamp for the selfies was the evening before, which would have been September 25th, at 11.15, and he's walking in the area. You can see in the photographs and from his cell records that he's in the same area, which would be in South Norfolk in the Foundation Park area. So when he was discovered, he was um, found in the possession of one library card that had his name on it, and another bank card with a female's name on it, and the, the cell phone. Uh, we did not know who he was. He didn't have any identification on him. So the next day he was identified through fingerprints when we went to the medical examiner's office. We followed up with the girl's name who was on the bank card and found out it was an ex-girlfriend of his who had also been looking for him for a few days. When we made contact with his family, uh, grandmother, who lives in that same area, she advised that she had not seen her grandson for three days and had not spoken to him. Uh, it appears he did not have a fixed address, that he would just kind of maybe go from friend's house to girlfriend's house or grandmother's house and he did not have this fixed address because he had just recently been released from uh, the prison systems where he served six years. He, I think he'd only been out maybe three months. I'm the mother of Redidio Fernandez Arrington, AKA James Swain. He was cremated and I didn't even know to the day of. I don't have a great site to go visit him. I, I don't have any closure for him. And when I go to his, my daughter, Latifa Arrington went to his Facebook and the people have nothing but good things to say about him. He would call me every morning. He was a good person. He was a friend. He was my son, my friend. He, one morning he got up and cooked breakfast for his sisters and I, his sister and I, and he was just, he was just the greatest. He, he was a sweetheart. I mean, I just want closure. I do want the person, I'm really angry and I don't have anything nice to say about the person, but whoever that has something to do with it or know something about it, I would appreciate if you guys would come forth and let someone know so I can rest at night. I can't get any sleep. I have to take medication to go to sleep at night. I can't. So at this point in time, that's all we have on this case. Um, we're just seeking more information as to the resolution.